In this video, I'm going to talk about APIs and the role that they play in data journalism. In particular, what APIs actually are, um, how they're used and some different stories that have used APIs in different ways, how they work and why you might use them yourself. So first of all, what is an API? Well, the letters API stand for Application Programming Interface. And basically what it means is um, an interface. That's the key word here. It's a way for you to interact with some sort of code. Um, in other words, normally as data journalists, we use them to interact with a database and get some data. Now, generally speaking, APIs are used for applications to talk to each other. That's why the word application is in there. So, for example, your keyboard and your um, computer, if you've got a, a keyboard plugged into a computer, they need to communicate to each other and they use an API. But broadly speaking, what we're interested in is when we want to talk to computers and we want to use code in order to do that. So we've got some piece of software and we need to talk to some software somewhere else. Let me give you some concrete examples to illustrate what I mean. Whenever you use a Twitter app like TweetDeck, you're basically using the Twitter API. What TweetDeck does, TweetDeck is an app, is it queries the Twitter API to get back some sort of data. So you might click on a hashtag in TweetDeck and what happens is that sends out a query to the Twitter API that says something like, please give me all the tweets with this hashtag and supply them to me in descending order from most recent to least recent. And so that query is sent out and Twitter's API sends back a list of or some data containing the tweets with that hashtag in that order. Now that happens obviously extremely quickly, but that's really how an API works. It asks a question, and it gets something back. The question is called a query, and it's very often supplied through some sort of URL. We will look at some examples of these later. So the question is asked by writing out some sort of URL that um, formulates that query. As a result, the API gives back something. Uh, normally it's either data or some sort of media. And that uh, result is called the endpoint. And it's basically the web page that you get when you type in the URL. So it, you can actually do this yourself. Uh, you can form a query by typing in a URL. And then the result that you get, the web page that's given to you, is the endpoint. It's the result of querying that API. And again, we'll look at some examples in a moment. So most of the time as journalists, that result is going to be data. It's going to be data in some sort of format, probably JSON or XML, formats we'll come on to later, but sometimes it's in an, an easier format for us like CSV. It might also be provided in HTML, or you might get some sort of media result like an image. For example, Google Maps has an API, in fact, it has a number of APIs, and you might query that API with a question that translates as something like, give me a map at this particular latitude and longitude and at zoom level four. And in response, it will provide you with a map. So in this case, it's not necessarily providing pure data, but it's providing some sort of image or asset that you can use in your own apps, for example, or your visualizations. Google also has a visualization API and you can supply a query to that and get charts in response as well. Normally your query would be in the shape of data that you want visualized. So it doesn't always have to be data. And you can also use APIs to um, create things. In this case, uh, the Twitter intent API can be used to create a tweet. You supply it with the information. For example, I want this text in the tweet and I want a link to this URL and you will be given a tweet ready to publish. The Open Corporates API will give you data on companies. You can ask a question, a query, like for this particular word, give me a list of all the companies that contain that word and the directors. And you'll get a result which could look like this network graph 
or could be um, uh, some more complex data. Now, APIs have been used in journalism uh, in a number of different ways. This is one story which I worked on around um, the acts that headlined music festivals. And during the process of this story, I used the Spotify API. The Spotify API has all sorts of data on musical artists. So it will tell you, for example, um, what albums and singles they have produced. It will tell them what other artists are similar. In other words, that people listen to um, people who listen to one artist will listen to these other artists as well. And that enabled me to build relationships between different artists in our list. In this particular story, um, the journalists used the Open Corporates API I showed you earlier to find out information about different companies and their links to each other. So again, they will have queried that API with a list of companies uh, or even addresses and then got data back. APIs can be used to do things like sentiment analysis as well. This is a really interesting piece of data journalism around Kanye West album lyrics, um, using an API to get a sentiment, uh, to get data essentially about the sentiments of the words used in the lyrics. It also used the um, Last FM API to get hold of the lyrics in the first place. So you will have APIs that provide lyrical data. Um, artist data and so on. The, the Genius API is also used here. The Emotion API is an API that looks at images of faces and gives you an indication of the sorts of emotions involved. And this was used in a story about Donald Trump and um, and his um, that used images of Donald Trump's appearances to measure and kind of create a timeline of emotion. And this was quite an interesting uh, use of APIs by the BBC Visual Journalism team who looked at online fashion images. What they did is they used the um, Safe Search uh, Image Recognition uh, API. So if I can search, show you another tool here, this is the um, Google Vision API specifically, which has a Safe Search um, part to it. And you can see that when you supply this with an image, so in, in this particular API, you, you actually supply a query in the shape of an image. You don't supply a text query, you give it an image, and that image is the query. In response, it will give you data about uh, how likely it thinks that the image is adult, how likely it is a spoof, uh, medical, whether it contains violence or not, and how uh, likely it is to be a racy image as well. So this was quite a clever creative way of using quite an unusual API, so a non-text API, an image API. And, um, and this is an API which is built on lots of data that Google has compiled through analyzing millions of images and um, the words associated with it. This is moving into machine learning territory, which we'll talk about um, elsewhere in the module. What this API can also do is extract text from images. So you can see here it's extracting the text at the bottom of the image and it's also uh, misinterpreting the man's uh, fingers as the number 17. And finally one other example of using an API was this story that I worked on about um, real season tickets. We wanted to do something different about this story um, this year in, in 2016 uh, normally the story revolves around the most expensive rail tickets, um, but we wanted to look at price per mile, and in particular we wanted to avoid looking at distance as the crow flies. One of the problems with measuring distances using a straight line between two points is that uh, journeys are rarely on a straight line, particularly if you have, for example, a river or an ocean in the middle of that line. So we used the Google Maps Distance Matrix API, which provides um, data on journey distances based on the mode of travel rather than a straight line. And, and this was quite an interesting example of how Google Maps doesn't show you all the data involved. So if you, you can plan a train journey using Google Maps and it will draw a line on the map, but it will only tell you uh, uh, how long it takes. It won't tell you the distance but the API underlying that does actually have that information 
and that's what we used to calculate these um, amounts. So part of this is, is firstly knowing that APIs exist and secondly what types of APIs there are and there are a wide range of APIs in every sector you can think of. Geographically there are lots of really useful APIs. Google Maps has a number which we've touched on. There's also UK postcodes which I'll come on to later, probably the most useful one, certainly the one I've used the most. There are certainly lots and lots of APIs for social media. Pretty much every social media platform has some sort of API in order to allow people to build apps with them. So Twitter, Facebook, everyone else, um, there will be some sort of API. Some are easier than others. Certainly over the last 10 years, these APIs have gone from being very open. Twitter was had a notoriously open API and uh, they've become increasingly closed as they no longer need developers to make apps. There are political APIs like uh, data.gov.uk and They Work For You, which collects information about what people do in um, the UK Parliament and similar um, assemblies. There are news APIs, uh, various news organisations provide APIs to query their data. There are APIs in health and business and music and so on. So I mentioned the Postcodes uh, API. There's more than one, but this is one that I uh, return to quite often, postcodes.io. Um, this allows you to query postcodes uh, for data, as I'll show you in a second. Uh, Parliament has a number of APIs providing political data. And you can use Google APIs in um, Google Sheets. So Google Translate, for example, is a function in Google Sheets that actually uses the Google API to translate. Um, Google Finance is another example. Um, so that's all I want to say about APIs just as an introduction. The first things to point out here are that APIs are a very useful way of getting hold of data. It might be extra data about postcodes, for example, such as what area they're in. It might be data about distances. It could be using the functionality of an API to analyze things like images or words. Um, you can also use APIs to visualize stuff, so you can generate charts and uh, maps using APIs. You can use them to connect to social media to generate tweets, for example, or to find out um, the volume of information being shared on particular social platforms. And perhaps most excitingly, uh, you can use APIs to create live data journalism that pulls in data from a, a feed, an API, and does something with that live. So whenever someone explores this, a, a, a tool that you've created, for example, it queries an API and gets the latest data. In a separate video, I'm going to talk more about specifics of um, how they work and some of the jargon involved. Um, so I'll see you in that video.